Hey guys, this is Laser Tag. This is what everybody has been wanting all the time. You keep asking for Laser Tag, so here it is. I'm going to give you the complete story behind Laser Tag, the complete overview on Laser Tag, the complete break uh, breakdown. So here it goes. I was originally, uh, the original gun we'll start off with was actually this one. It originally was a Laser Tag gun, but then it broke. So I originally got the idea because, A, I like to play laser tag, so I wanted to be able to play it at my house. So I originally thought to use some little IR transmitters and IR receivers, just um, no remote control stuff, no modulation, just straight IR, just feed DC into the transmitters and read the receivers. And I was going to, um, in the tr instead of IR transmitters, I was going to use red lasers because red is very close to IR in the color spectrum. So... Um, I was just going to use red lasers for that, and while I found that it worked fine at night, um, you had to A, hit the tiny sensors very exactly, so that was um, you know somewhat difficult, and B, didn't work at all during the day. So I put that on this gun, as you can see this, um, this clear sensor here, and this clear sensor right here, um, but I ended up just scrapping the mode because it on um, all the guns except for the second gun because it, it just didn't work. So then I um, switched to the, uh, well on this gun too, I had then, I just did some testing on my breadboard and stuff to figure out that, that didn't work. Um, or I thought I would use it only during the night or something. So then I decided, well, okay, I'll get some of these IR remotes and um, some of their matching IR receivers, which are this uh, black receiver here. And um, then that will work during the day. And it turned out that it worked great because one, you don't have to hit the person exact on their sensor. You just have to get it somewhere in the general area because the IR um, remotes here, I don't know if, if this one would have batteries in it or not, have a pretty wide, yeah, it does have a pretty wide IR beam. You can see it, you can tilt it like that and, uh, you know, it's about 10 degrees or so. So you don't actually have to hit the uh, person that exact. So I ended up making that the only mode in laser tag. Um, so that's really the story behind laser tag. So let's get started on how it's actually built. This gun is a great example because it's open, you know, pretty much. So um, just to give you an overview, we have the kit here from Sparkfawn. Um, it's originally to be uh, was meant to be like an AT Mega um, our serial to LCD, but I figure it has an Arduino on it. So why would you bother to? you know, have a second one just interface to the LCD Direct. It's already hooked up, so this is the only Arduino in here. Um, it's just a standard AT Mega th uh, 328. It's a nice little kit. Um, not really useful as a serial to LCD because, um, like I said, there's already a microcontroller on here, so just use that one. So I have that one hooked up. Um, let me see here. The um, I have, so... Yeah, I have power here. Let's start off with power. Power is these two battery packs in series. Each of them is double A's. I have a video on my channel on how to fix them because when you buy them, they're actually broken. So um, connect them in series. As you can see, here's the series connection in the, uh, in the middle. And um, then connect the positive. So you can see here it loops uh, to the top of this diode or to the anode of the diode. The cathode of the diode becomes your 5 volt rail. Now the diode is there because A, when these battery packs are completely full, rechargeables are completely full, the voltage is actually around 6 volts. Um, so this diode will bring it down to about 5.5. And I know the Arduino can work in the 6 volt range, but um, just to be safe also in case you plug in the batteries backwards or something, um, that's why it's there, and the Arduino can operate lower voltages, and I think the LCD has also a 5.5 volt max, um, so that diode is there to protect from it. Uh, I You just solder um, to the serial programming header, you ju I just soldered a breakout cable and then um, a little header there so I could program the gun while it was completely built. So uh, on this thing, um, solder the LCD up, connect the power, and then all you have to do is connect um, one data connection to this, that's all. The data connection from the sensor, from the IR sensor, the, the black IR sensor that you can see here, right? The data connection from that sensor, I do not remember the pin on that sensor, but if you look up the sensor's data sheet, connect it to pin um, 10, D10, digital pin 10 on this. That's the only connection you need to make. Um, to this besides power and ground from the various sensors and things. Remember all grounds must be common. Um, so then what you can do is, I don't know if you can see, but inside there, there's the IR remote, 
And here's the IR um, diode on the front. Let's see, okay. So um, you, you're seeing one of the issues here is that the, the battery is not connected well, but I'll get into that later. So um, you have the, um, basically here what you do is on the IR remote, let's see if I have it taken apart one to show you. Okay, so uh, when I said um, basically uh, about connecting um, up the uh, trigger to the gun to actually make this fire, this is what I was talking about. So you find a button, we're going to use this power button right here. This is a power button. So as you can see, the power button has two sides um, to, the, to the button. There's this side and this side. So we can see that on this side, there's one of these little, um, little black... Um, Actually, that's not a very good example. Um, so if you're doing one of these, don't do the power button, because the uh, black via actually ends up with no trace exposed, and you're going to need trace exposed. So let's take this bottom button here. This bottom button is the AVTV button. Okay, as you can see, it has two little black vias on either side of the button. Okay, so we're going to flip the board over, and remember that these two vias are our vias. Okay, so then what we're going to do is going to just take our screwdriver or something and scrape the um, remote until we can actually see the copper underneath. We're going to basically, our goal is to scrape away the solder resist until we get enough area to actually solder to. Okay, so as you can see right there, I've used this uh, screwdriver to scrape away the solder resist and get some um, metal there to actually solder to. Now that's not a huge joint, but it's big enough to solder a wire to. And then you just want to do that with the other via as well. Solder wires to those, and then solder on a um, uh, switch to the end of those to um, actually trigger it. And uh, when I was talking about the battery, this bottom one is negative because the battery would slide in. Um, let me get the battery, one sec. God, it won't come out of this stupid housing. Um, it looks like I'm actually going to have to take it out one sec while I take out the battery. Okay, so the battery, right? You can see the battery fits in it like this, okay? The, so the top we know is positive and the bottom is negative. So the top is touching this little spring connector right there, and the bottom is touching this little spring connector here. So I'd take, take one of the battery packs. You've wired two of them in series, okay? Take the negative... Um, from the battery packs, which is the same as the ground from your Arduino, solder to this pad right here. Okay, uh, you got plenty of room to solder it to. So that's going to be your negative. Then take the middle of the two battery packs. So uh, the so basically one battery pack, uh, the part of one battery pack, the positive is going to be connected to the negative. Of the next one, take that point right there, cut off the spring part right here so it doesn't accidentally short to this and solder that, that to this pin because I find that taking one of these batteries and leaving it in here just by pressure without this little custom holder or um, gluing it in doesn't work. The, the contacts get messed up by the glue or don't connect so you're going to have to do that just to make sure the contacts connect. Um, and that's really it for um, this uh, little IR remote, pretty simple. Uh, again, the link to buy these and the data sheet for these and the example code is all going to be on the project page uh, called Electronics Projects. It's going to be linked in the description for this video, so go down there and see it. You've done that. Um, you should be good to go. Pulling the trigger will initiate a shot, um, and that shot will go through, uh, will travel through the air in the form of IR beams, hit the detector, be registered by the detector, and on the screen it will say hits um, and how many times you have been hit. Sorry, that's my cat back there. Uh, anyway, that's really the logistics of building laser tag. As you can see, that's it's exceedingly simple. If you want, you can, I increased the size of the IR LED. Originally it was a three millimeter and I increased it to a five millimeter. Um, just to get a bit of extra range. These guns have pretty decent range of 50 feet or so, which is probably more than you'll ever actually use in laser tag. So um, that's really it for the um, logistics of building it. If we go on to the code side of things, um, you can look on my website. Again, all of this stuff is going to be linked in the laser tag um, project page or electronics projects, this is now called. Um, in my website, so go look at the, in um, the description of this video and get linked over to there where the code will be. But essentially what the code does is it reads the detector 
uh, at the front here, this uh, black IR detector. Again, I'll link the in, in the um, electronics projects page where laser tag project is. I'll link the data sheet to this and where you can buy this and uh, where you can buy the IR remotes and all that good stuff. So um, what the, the I, I basically use SparkFun's example code almost exactly. But what I did is I basically said, read the data off this thing. And if the data is the same, basically you have to know which button. So m m remember which button you connected the trigger to. Um, so you pull it, and it it's going to read out the flash of uh, lights. And um, that's going to correspond to a certain button. So in this case, I think it's like the volume left something, volume left button. So then you go on your code, and you basically say, if the signal I'm getting is anything but the volume left button, including garbage, basically what SparkFun puts in their code is negative one, including garbage, which means the signal, there is a signal at 38 kilohertz modulated, but um, it's not readable. I still include that as a hit, because somebody could be shooting you from too far away around a corner or something. Because IR remotes, obviously, there's no need to, sh to control a TV from more than 30 feet away, so they don't bother to include that. But uh, so past that range, it, it, the signal becomes garbage, basically. But um, I still read the garbage anyway and count it as a hit because the likelihood that it's your own garbage is very slim. You'd have to be shoot, like swinging the gun through the air with a tree or a wall next to you at the perfect angle to count your own shot as garbage. So it's conceivable that you could shoot yourself, but highly unlikely. So uh, and then what it does is it takes that and it, it basically counts this variable called hits in the code. So then on the screen it'll print the word hits and then how many times you've been hit. And then if the signal signal was intelligible, I have remembered each button that um, I programmed all the, the, the other guns that I made the trigger for the other guns go for. And if you don't remember the buttons, you can get SparkFun's example code, aim the gun at the um, aim the gun at the um, the receiver, and then it'll tell you which button it is. Um, I think there's an issue with the the volume left and volume right labeling. Anyways, that's um, that's just a little aside, basically. So um, so then what you do is you can basically say this gun I labeled gun number one. So if it receives the signal that I know gun number one is shooting because I tested it and remembered it, then it's going to say number one hit you last, just to give the player a bit more detail about what who hit them obviously as I said before this only works at a very short range um, and another thing to remember when building these guns you want to put like a large capacitor like you should put one of these like 10,000 microfarad caps um, on the power supply at that, that is after the diode um, that's because I noticed that these guns while you're moving them around and stuff the battery packs um, the batteries in the battery packs will uh, disconnect and if you don't have a capacitor on it um, the uh, the uh, laser tag will actually reset, so you want one of these large capacitors because this can actually fuel um, laser tag for a decent amount of time. By decent, I mean like probably half a second or something. I haven't tested it, but you know what? I'll do that right now. Okay, so here I have the gun powered up with the cap, and um, I'm just going to basically bang on the table when I disconnect the power supply so you can see how long the 10,000 microfarad cap feeds it. So you can see um, the 10,000 microfarad cap was feeding it for a long time um, before, you see now it resets, but if I, if I disconnect it again, you can see the backlight will start to dim, but it still has the data, right, if I take it off, but it comes back with a blank screen without saying Jacob's laser tag, have fun. That means it, it can, this la actually lasts a few seconds. You can see I plug it in and it's still good. So one, two, three. So you can see it, it, it actually keeps the state of laser tag for a few seconds um, with one of these large caps. Um, so works fairly well, actually. Um, so you should do that just so that uh, when you rattle the batteries around, um, laser tag will keep its... Um, keep its state basically, not reset itself. So now I'm going to take the first gun and I'm actually going to shoot the second gun just so you can see what happens. 
So you can see it says hits one. I'm sorry, this is upside down. I just can't get it to be right set up and in the frame at the same time. So it hits one. It said number one hits you last. So now you see if I swing the gun around while I'm doing it, it's going to say hits two because what it's getting is basically a negative one signal, which is garbage. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, it's basically getting a signal that's garbage. It's an unreadable signal, but it knows it's a signal because it has the 38 kilohertz encoding. So it basically just adds one to the hit count, but it doesn't know who it is. And if I shoot it as uh, number one again, it'll say hits number three. And if I shoot off the ceiling, um, it hits four. And it, it has a three second period of invincibility just so that you don't get shot like a million times um, by the same person. You have enough time to run away. And if you can see, I'm gonna disconnect this cap again and then still connect it back. So um, you really do need that cap. And you really do need to connect the middle of the batteries up to um, to basically uh, one of these battery packs with the right polarity um, to the IR transmitter because um, that way basically just gluing in a CR2032 very unreliable um, doesn't work so that's laser